This video will give a tutorial for fitting count models in R. We're going to read in the fishing data set with uh, a couple of functions here. We're first going to use the tidyverse library of functions to do some plotting. The next thing I'm going to say is I'm going to set my working directory. I don't know that we've learned this in class, but the setwd function allows you to list where the working directory is on your computer. And then what you can do in the next step is when you read in any other future data files, all you'll have to put is the data file. And so in this case, read underscore CSV, phishing.csv is my data file. And so I'm going to run those lines of code. And so you can see I've got the phishing data set loaded. Let me open that up to see what it looks like. I have uh, the variables here. Uh, no fish is the number of fish. Uh, or sorry, the number of people that didn't fish in the group. Live bait is whether or not they used live bait. Camper is whether or not the group camped overnight or not. Persons is the number of people in the group. Child is the number of children in the group. And then count is the number of fish that were caught uh, by each party when they went fishing. And so those are the data. It looks like they're in. So let's take a look at the response variable count. I'm going to use ggplot, plot the fishing data set. Uh, count is what I'm interested in. I'm going to do a histogram. I'm going to set the bin width to 5, so each of the units along the x-axis will represent five, uh, 5 units. And then I'm going to label the x lab or the x-label with the number of fish caught. And then I'm going to use this theme black and white or theme underscore BW uh, just to kind of give the, the plot some theme. And so when I do that, uh, I get the plot. We've seen this plot in lecture. And so I have the number of fish caught here on the x-axis and then the number of times they were caught on the y-axis. And so you can see there's lots of times people go out, they catch zero or just a few number of fish. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to fit a uh, Poisson model. And so here I'm going to call this m.poisson, and I'm going to use the glm function. Now the glm function fits generalized linear models. Count is my y variable of interest, or my dependent variable. And I'm going to fit it using the number of children in the group, whether or not the people camped overnight, and then how many people were in the group. The family that I need to specify is Poisson. In this case, my if I say family Poisson, it lets the GLM function know that I want to fit a Poisson distribution to my data. And my data set is called fishing. And so I'm going to run, highlight these lines of code and hit run. And you'll see the output here. Let me scroll up and we can see all the output here. So what we see is we see the generalized linear model called back to us. We see the residuals. And so we can think about the residuals here being representing in units the number of fish that were caught. Just like in a linear model, when we do a regression, we have all of the coefficients and the z values and things like that that we can compare to. We have significance codes associated with each of the parameters. We have the dispersion parameter. Uh, is 1 for the Poisson. Now you might remember from the slides that the negative binomial would take on an over dispersion parameter which would be quite different uh, than the Poisson where we assume it's just 1. And then we have values for the null deviance and the residual deviance. Don't need to know specifically what these are but uh, think about these as related to the sums of the squares that we learned about in uh, in linear regression. And then we have the AIC value, or the IK keys information criteria, which is going to allow us to compare this to the zero inflated model that will fit next. Other things that we can see are important here. The first thing I notice is that all of the, the three variables I put into my model are all what we might think about as significant. These p-values are quite small. They're less than 0.05. And then if I look at what the values are saying, the magnitude and the sign of the values, my dependent variable is the number of fish caught. When I have a negative value for the number of children in a group, this indicates that if there are more children in a group, I will catch fewer fish. 
That makes sense to me. I've fished with my nieces and nephews, and sometimes they have been more of a hindrance to my fishing abilities uh, rather than benefiting my fishing abilities. The next variable is camper. So if you camped overnight, at least one night, you have a higher chance, because this value is positive, of catching more fish. Same thing, if the number of people in your group is positive, because this estimate is positive, it would indicate that if there are more people in the group, you'll catch more fish. And so it's important to not only look at whether or not the variables are significant, but what they're saying about your response variable. And so that's the Poisson uh, data, the Poisson distribution applied uh, to our, our model. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to fit a zero inflated Poisson model or a zip model. Now there's no way to do this that I know of in base R, and so we'll need to use another package. And so another package that does zero infl inflated models really well is the PSCL package. Now the PSCL package was a package developed by the Political Science Computation Lab, and I think they're at MIT, um, but a great number of useful functions for fitting zero inflated models. And so install the package if you don't have it installed, and then run the library, so we want to use that package. This looks very similar to the code above. I'm going to call this new model m.zip, and instead of GLM, it uses its own function called zero INFL for zero inflated. And so I'm going to say the count is what I'm interested in. That's my response variable. And again, my three independent variables, child, camper, and persons. And my data set is fishing. And then I'm going to summary. Uh, I'm going to put the summarize of that. Now it already knows this zero INFL function already knows that I want to fit the Poisson model by default. So I don't need to actually have to say that in my model. And so I'll highlight this and click Run. And let's take a look at the data. Should look very similar to um, what you're seeing uh, in uh, some of the other our, our output we've looked at. Again, it calls back, gives me the data model that it fit. It gives me the residual values. Now you'll see it kind of provides two sets of coefficients here. And this is because in the zero inflated model, remember it fits a count model and then a zero inflated model kind of separately. And so what it does here, the count model kind of represents if you have fish that were caught, here's the number of fish that you caught. Um, and you can see very similar to the other um, approaches that we looked at. That is, if you have more children in a group, you have you're likely to see uh, fewer fish caught. If you camped, you have more fish caught. If you had higher number of persons in the group, you have even more uh, fish caught, as predicted by the model in these estimates. Now, the zero inflated model coefficients are a little bit different. And so in here, you can think about this as, because this is a logit link model, this is more of the logistic part of the zero inflated model. This is more going to say something about, well, did you catch zero fish or not? So in other, in other words, did you catch zero fish or one, two, three, four, or more fish? And so you can see that the signs of the estimates are opposite of what we might expect them to be for the count model. And that would make sense. So if you're going to catch more fish if you have more people in it, you would expect to have a lower probability of catching zero fish if you um, if you had more people in a group. And so you can look in here and see the, the values for the count model from the zero inflated are going to be probably similar, but not exactly the same as they are for the regular Poisson model. And the zero inflation model coefficients are going to be different um, because we're now predicting this using this binomial form. And so you can see it gives uh, uh, some other information here, the log likelihood, the number of degrees of freedom, and so that might be helpful for us to, to know. And so the last thing we want to do is to compare the two AIC values. So the function AIC, all in uppercase, allows us to compare the AIC values for the two different models, in our case the Poisson model and the zero inflated Poisson model. And so if we highlight these values, 
we can click run and what I like to see is that it gives me the degrees of freedom and it gives me the AIC values and so the degrees of freedom for the Poisson model is lower than the degrees of freedom for the zero inflated Poisson model remember the zero inflated model has that extra part uh, and kind of those two different sets of coefficients however what we can see is that when we look at the AIC values the zero inflated Poisson provides a much lower AIC value which would indicate that model is of better quality than the Poisson model. When we look at AIC values, if we find a difference more than two, two units away, then we would prefer the model that has the lower AIC. And so in this case, 1521 is much less than 1682. So we have evidence to favor the zero inflated Poisson model. As it turns out, we need to take into account the number of fish we caught when we caught zero fish because knowing that and having a separate model for that and the zero inflated approach allows us to have a better estimate of the number of fish we might catch and so this is a quick summary of how we might fit zero inflated models in r and again uh, we can fit uh, the regular poisson and the negative binomial although we didn't fit a negative binomial here we could use that just from base r uh, looking at the GLM function. If we wanted to fit the zero inflated Poisson and the zero inflated negative binomial, this PCL function or this PCL, PSCL library works very well for fitting zero inflated models.